Now how do we store strings in Python? Well, we've already been using strings. For example, in our print statement, if we just said, hi, this is a string. And basically that just means a sequence of characters grouped together. So how do we store this? Well, there's two main ways to store Python strings. That would be in double quotes like we've been using. So for example, storing a first name here. Also though, you can use single quotes to do the same thing. So Alice Berry. So printing out a first and last name and printing this out. There you go, Alice Berry. Remember, the print command is automatically going to add a space into here. If you combined these two yourself, you would have to add that space manually. So making a full name variable and then putting first and then last name together, then you would have to put a space in between here. Now, first of all, how do we put these two together? Well, you concatenate them with a plus operator like so. So this plus sign just means take this last name and squish it to the end of the first one like that. So now we can put a full name right there and run this and there you go, Alice Berry. Again, as I said, you need to manually put a space in here because this is just going to grab this first string and put it up against the other. So if we add a space in between these two like this, so first name and then add on a space and then add on the last name like that. Now, whatever you start with, either a single or a double quote, that's what the string is going to end with. So if you start with a single quote, then you can write all kinds of stuff, and when you're ready to end it, you need to use another single quote. The reason I'm saying this is what if you have an apostrophe somewhere in here? For example, if you said, I can't go outside today, and then end it with a single quote like this. Notice that all of this is now white. That is because, again, if you start with a single quote, anytime it sees another single quote, it's going to end the string. So this right here is the first string, and then this would be a bunch of just jibber jabber that's going to give you an error. And then this will start up another string, as you could see if you started typing right there. So that's no good. We need a way to let this apostrophe happen. Well, Python can use double and single quotes. So instead of starting it with a single quote, if you started it with a double quote, then the string won't end until it sees another double quote. So putting one over here like that. Now this apostrophe is not going to get in the way anymore. So I can display this message just like that. Same thing goes if you say some kind of quote. For example, he said, nice to meet meet you like that and then you want it to store all of this in a string if you use double quotes then as soon as it sees another double quote it's going to end your message so you don't want that we're going to use single quotes right there and right there and now it's going to allow you to have double quotes in your string without messing anything up as you can see here of course, there's going to be times where you have both single and double quotes inside of a quote. Then what do you do? Now, if you start with a single quote, in, when it sees this other single quote, it's going to end your string. But if you start with a double quote at the beginning here, then it's going to end when it sees this other double quote. So in cases like this, you can use what's called an escape sequence. And you do that by doing a backslash in front of this single quote. And what this will do is just say, no, I don't want the string to end. And this backslash is not going to be included in the message. As you can see here, right here where the apostrophe is, there's no backslash. Similarly, if you instead use double quotes for this, now you would need to escape these. So but putting a backslash here, and then one right before here, now running this, as you can see, works the same way. You could also just concatenate these strings together, however. For example, instead of putting a backslash, you could end your quote and then add on the next part. And since the next part has double quotes, you start it with a single quote and then do double quotes and then end with a single quote. So now he says the mailman's greeting to me was, and then because this one needs double quotes in it, you can start and end with single quotes instead. So running this will give you the same exact result as last time, but this time we concatenated strings. That brings me to my next point, is that if you have two string literals, you don't need to concatenate them with a plus sign. You can actually just 
leave it like this and it will automatically concatenate these two. So if I run this, notice there's no problem here. So even if there's a bunch of spaces in between here, this still works perfectly fine. This example might be a little confusing, so let's bring it up to this first last name example. If you had, for example, Ben, and you wanted to add on a last name, you could just put another string. Notice the space here as well is going to make sure that these aren't squished together. But running this, and notice it displays the full name, and I didn't need to put a plus sign in between here. Now be careful because you do need to put a plus sign when you have a variable instead of a string literal. For example, in a scenario like this, you will need to put a plus here. So we can run this and get this. Similarly, if you had this flipped around, you need to put a plus here if it's a variable. Now what if you were writing a very large amount of text? So and instead of keep writing onto this and having it go off screen, you want to just go down to the next line. If you did do that though, and then started writing up again, and when you run it, you're not going to get any errors. But if I do run it, notice only the top line is what is displayed right now. This part is ignored. This is similar to how our multi-line comments work. A couple videos ago is that if you don't assign a string to anything then it's just going to be ignored. So what if I do want these two strings to be grouped together? Again, putting it up here, I can do this and I don't need to even put a plus sign here, although you can, but this defeats the purpose of it going off screen and I don't want that. So how do I allow it to go down to the next line? Well, you can wrap all of this in round parentheses like this. And now it will grab all your text. So I can run this again and notice now it's all pushed together. There's not even a space in between these two sets of quotes. So I can add one just like that. And Python will also allow you to indent up to here without giving you any errors because technically all of this is still one statement. So I can keep writing stuff here and then run it and there you go. Notice all of this is one after another strings. What if you wanted to have some line feeds in there? Well, one thing you could do is put slash n and a slash n stands for a new line. So if I ran this, notice there's a new line right now here. So you could do that. Another thing you could do is instead of just concatenating a bunch of strings together, you could use a multi-line string. So we did this with our comments by doing three quotes like this. And now we can remove all the other quotes in here because this whole thing is going to be combined together. So if I run this, notice it displays everything in this string exactly as it is in the string down to even going down to the next line. And notice we're tabbing over here. That is represented in our string as well. So be careful there. It's multi-line strings are gonna keep the same formatting you have as in the strings. Again, remember, you can use three double quotes if you want to right here. The cool thing though, of course, about using multi-line is that if you had a quote somewhere in here, it's not going to mess anything up because we started with three quotes, we need to end with three quotes. So seeing this single quote doesn't affect this in any way. If you did, she said, and then in the quote, and then now in the string with three quotes. Notice that this quote doesn't interrupt anything and the single quote right here doesn't interrupt anything because we started with three quotes so we need to end the string with three. So there you go. That's another way to have quotes and apostrophes in a string. That's enough for now. We'll get more into strings in the next video, but I do want to make a note of this before I go, is that you probably noticed that your variables are variant. What that means is that I can have age here, and I could store a string in here called two, and I don't need to say that this is a string before storing it, like other languages might have you do. That also means that I can change this to 32, or to just two if we're going along with this and there's no problems doing this so if i run and print this notice it still prints out two but now age is actually an integer instead of a string like it was up here so in other languages you can't have this flexibility 
to be able to just jump from one type to another. Now, just because your variables are variant doesn't mean that we still don't have types. So if I said, for example, age equals 32, and then I went info equals and then put plus age. So we would expect this to be his age is 32. So let's print out info. And notice though, when I run this, it says type error must be a string, not an integer. So we can't combine strings with other types. We have to first make sure that age is a string. So of course, surrounding in quotes, and we can run this again, and now it will work perfectly fine because we're concatenating two strings, not two different types. Everything is objects in Python, and it has a class related to it, and the string class is called str. Like again we did in the last video and called the constructor, str is the strings class. So this will call the constructor and we can input in something to convert into a string. So now this won't give us an error anymore because first converting it to a string and then running it. So there you go. Thanks for watching.